I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people just like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Today's guest is the editor of Veg World Magazine, which you can actually get a free subscription to, and we'll tell you about that. I had no idea the two days in a row we were going to have food editors from the two best vegan magazines, and she is actually going to cook a recipe that sounds amazing. I, I can't say the name of it in Turkish, but it is a stuffed Turkish eggplant dish. And her name is Kathy Caton Grazzini, which I totally botched yesterday, but I practiced today. And this will be my first time meeting her. We've been communicating for a long time via text and email because I'm a contributor to Vegetable Magazine. So this is my first time seeing her. She's as cute as a button and I hope her food is as delicious as it looks in the photo. I'm sure it will be. Please welcome to the show, Kathy Caton Grazzini. Thanks, Chef AJ. Hi, everybody. I'm thrilled to be here. And uh, yes, I, you know, I don't know if you want to start off with questions or if I should just launch right into the recipe. What would you like to do, AJ? Well, why don't you just tell us where you're from, what you do, and then jump into the recipe. Okay. Well, uh, my name is Kathy Caton Grazzini. I'm here in Ridgefield, Connecticut, where we have beautiful fall weather today, amazingly. It's in the 70s. Feel really blessed. No hurricanes at the moment. Um, my, uh, I'm a, a personal chef and food editor, as AJ said, of uh, Veg World magazine, which is a bi-monthly free online journal uh, celebrating the joys of vegan and plant-based living. And uh, I encourage everybody to uh, go check it out at uh, vegworldmag.com where you can sign up for a subscription. And um, I also have a, my business is Kathy's Kitchen Prescription. And I know in the in the notes, uh, there'll be links to my website if you uh, like what we do today and you want to sign up for future videos and, and uh, recipes that I'm posting all the time. Um, I work with some local physicians helping people transition to a plant-based diet uh, for health reasons and environmental reasons, of course, and for animal cruelty as well. And, uh, and I've been doing this for the past eight years or so. So uh, we're- oh, Have you been vegan that long or longer? We've been vegan that long, uh, medical reasons. We had a big health scare with my husband a number of years, all those years ago, and a botched surgery that we almost lost him. And um, he had a blockage in one of his arteries. And uh, that launched me into a whole nother career path. Um, where I, uh, we realized when he, when we got home from the hospital and they canceled us for PTSD because it, it was that scary, uh, that the, the best route forward for us was plant-based nutrition, very low in fats. And uh, went back to uh, did, uh, plant-based nutrition and got certified through the Cornell program and um, brushed up on some of my culinary skills. I lived in Italy for many years and I, I love to cook. And, uh, but I decided to, um, with the encouragement of my doctor actually, to, um, to make this a, uh, a profession and a career to help other people uh, get back in the kitchens and learn how to make uh, wonderful and diverse and satisfying plant-based dishes. That's fantastic. Do you, well, obviously now with the pandemic, we're not really doing in-person cooking classes, but when it isn't, is that something you do? Yes. I mean, normally I, uh, I do monthly classes right here. In, you know, I'm allowed to do it from the health department and folks come on over. I also have a road show where I go to other places. We get groups together, but obviously under COVID, none of that is possible. I'm also do uh, personal chefing for families uh, in the area uh, who want, you know, who want and, and need those, uh, that support. Um, but all of that is sort of on pause. So I've been very active in the kitchen, channeling all my nervous energy uh, into uh, developing new recipes and, and resurrecting traditional uh, recipes from all over the world. Wonderful uh, home cooking dishes that I, I tweet to make them um, healthier. And, uh, and plant-based. Nice, how did you get involved with Veg World Magazine? Actually, they approached me. Uh, I think they just uh, saw some of what I was doing, photographs. This was uh, when Mandy Smith was uh, owner and, uh, and they got in contact, asked me if I wanted to participate and, uh, and it's been a love affair ever since. So it's a great, great little group of uh, passionate people. That's fantastic. Well, I, I, what, what is the name of the dish you're doing today? I, I didn't know how to pronounce it. Yes. So this is a Turkish dish. 
um, Imam Bayildi, and I'm not sure if I'm botching the pronunciation, uh, it translates as the Imam fainted, uh, presumably because he it was, it's such a sensual and delicious tasting dish uh, that his poor senses were overwhelmed at the beauty and the deliciousness of it. It could also be, I wondered to myself, as I looked at the traditional uh, recipe is originally made with so much olive oil that I thought the poor fellow, his uh, blood vessels probably went into spasm <laughs> and that might be why it passed out. But, um, but our version is gonna be oil free. So no worries on that account. Oh, I can't wait to see it. And if people want the recipe, they just go to your website after the show, yes, right? Yes, I'm going to, uh, I haven't posted it yet. You know, I've been uh, waiting for the show actually, because uh, I wanted folks to come here and see. And, uh, but I promised everybody that as soon as we're done here, go to my website, to the recipes page, give me an hour or so after the show and, uh, and I'll get the recipe up there. Great, thank you. So let's begin and please, you know, ask questions of AJ and she'll, She'll wave or pipe up and I'll be happy to try to answer them as we proceed. So um, because we have a fixed camera here, I can't, I'm gonna hold up all my ingredients as we go so you can see what we're doing. Um, usually this, I made the proportions for about two pounds of eggplant. Usually I like them a little bit smaller than this, but this week these, these are beautiful and firm, um, but it doesn't matter. Uh, I have three lovely eggplants. Sometimes you can do four or five if they're like the four inch variety. And what I've done is I've just removed the sepals, the top, the little top knob where the stem is, is very woody and hard. I've left the cap there, but I've removed uh, just the rough part of it. And, and, uh, uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to braise them first and then there are several steps to this, but, um, but just to get started in the interest of time, I'm going to cut a slit, um, leaving about a half an inch on each end, just making a deep pocket. And I, I'm gonna do that on these three eggplants. And this is, will be where we will stuff them. Now, the reason you don't wanna go all the way down is because you wanna create a sort of a boat that's gonna capture um, our stuffing and if you if you cut the edges it will just flop open uh, so we'll just leave a little on each end nobody likes floppy eggplant that's for sure <laughs> oh so alev tabak says that i'm uh, he, I think, I'm sorry, if I, I can't tell if you're male or female, is, is from Turkey and oh loves boy. that dish and wants to know, do you know why the why they fainted? That there, There's a story behind it. <laughs> uh, no, I don't know. I'm only guessing at that as well. I always assumed it's just it's because from Turkey. It's, and it was that. just so wonderful a dish that he, the poor man, his senses were just overwhelmed. Now, this is a little vegetable broth. Um, I, uh, you, you can buy it, but most often I just, I steam so many greens, leafy greens that uh, I just capture the cooking water. And sometimes I flavor it up to make a, a more substantial broth depending on what I'm using it for. But for this purpose, this is just simply Swiss, Swiss chards and, uh, <laughs> and collard greens probably. So I'm putting in this, I have my eggplants here. I've added about a half an inch up the sides. And so just to displace the water a little bit, and I'm gonna turn on the flame on medium and cover it. And these, and we'll be turning these every 15 minutes or so, so they soften. Normally this is done in olive oil. We're just gonna be using broth that works beautifully. And we're going to be cooking these until they're quite, until they pretty much collapse. They'll be just very soft, fully cooked. Um, and so that's just gonna take a little time and we'll, We'll let that be for now and move on to what we're gonna be putting inside the eggplants. Um, so for this, uh, let me show you all the ingredients. It's pretty simple. I have sliced up a nice large uh, white onion, yellow onion, any kind of onion is fine. Um, in the interest of saving time, I did a little bit in advance because I didn't, you know, I didn't, <laughs> didn't want to try your patience with too long uh, a session here, but I love to make this dish. It, 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 what it, it contains traditionally are tomatoes, 
bell peppers, um, uh, garlic, and uh, pepper tomato sauce. Uh, so we'll, we'll be going through all the, and some seasonings. Um, and I find that the little, the little uh, bell peppers, the mini peppers that you can find in all the supermarkets, Costco, it's just so widely available now. They're so wonderful. When you roast your peppers and your tomatoes, it uh, reduces them, it concentrates their sugars, it caramelizes the sugars, concentrates their flavors. And I find that it's a, a wonderful surrogate to really bump up um, the flavor intensity uh, in this dish. So what I did ahead of this class is uh, just to save time was just in a 375 oven, I cored the little mini pe uh, peppers, just removed their stems, cored out their, se uh, their seeds, laid them flat on a piece of parchment on a cookie sheet and roasted them for about, geez, it depends on your oven, but you know, a half an hour, 25 minutes, you should check them um, because you don't want them to burn. What we're looking for, and here they are whole here, is that you want them to collapse. They're full of sugars and uh, natural sugars and, uh, and moisture, so they get very soft and flaccid with a little browning of their skins. And this, these, the, the other reason I like the mini peppers is their skins, you don't have to skin them as you normally would um, cooking the full size peppers. You, you, in this dish, you would typically char the exterior and remove the skins, which can be thick and kind of indigestible. No worries um, with, uh, with these mini peppers. And I should mention also with regard to the eggplant, today's, uh, varieties of modern eggplants are so sweet. We no longer have to, you know, the old eggplant recipes, they can be very acrid, they can be very um, bitter. And so the pra typical practice in so many recipes is to salt them amply and draw the, the bitter liquids out and then rinse them and then do whatever you're gonna do with them. But we don't have to do that anymore. So all those steps are no longer necessary, especially in this dish. Um, um, Ines wants to know if you can freeze roasted peppers. I buy roasted peppers in the freezer section of Trader Joe's, so I'm assuming yes. Yes, I, I, you know, I find that roasted peppers just like this are, with nothing, is a fantastic snack. So in our house, we, we often just nibble on them. It's great for kids, you know, uh, full of uh, vitamin C and all sorts of uh, uh, beta carotene and lycopene and all these wonderful phytonutrients. Um, but in answer to your question, you probably could freeze them if you don't eat them quickly, <laughs> as we tend to do. You know, I think that's brilliant that you save the steaming liquid from your greens. I actually drink it. It's called pot liquor and it's delicious. It is delicious. And I, you know, so waste not, want not. And yes, it's, it's you know, whatever the vitamins uh, and minerals that leach into the water and you can see it's colored, but, uh, you know, it's, it's not clear at the end. It's just wonderful to recycle that and to use it. So I keep all, you know, this is a balsamic vinegar bottle, wine bottles, whatever, in the fridge, always full for stocks and for sauces and so forth. So, um, so I've roasted these peppers. I've slivered them up. I also use cherry tomatoes. Now you don't have to use cherry tomatoes. It's tomato pepper season right now. But uh, similar to the peppers for this dish, they're just so full of flavor. They never disappoint. Um, and I roast them as well for similar amount of time. They may take a little bit longer. I just cut them in half uh, on the parchment paper and you can do you know, peppers first and, and tomatoes afterwards. Um, and uh, so after that, what we have is um, I'm going to, one of the ingredients, we're gonna be making a saute now with the onions, the peppers, the tomatoes, and a couple of other things. But there are one or two steps I have to do, uh, which I thought we'd do together um, before I start the, the flame on the saute. So I took a cup of those roasted peppers and in um, our friend who's from Turkey, we, we could probably attest to this, but from what I gather uh, in Turkey, if we were living there, much we have tomato paste readily available in the US, but we don't have pepper paste. But in Turkey, they do. And uh, there are so many wonderful uh, types of peppers from hot and spicy all the way down the spectrum to, to sweet. Um, but you could buy pepper paste. And typically, that's what's used 
in the traditional Imam Bayildi uh, recipe, but we don't have that available here. So we're gonna make our own pepper paste. Um, simply, That's, that actually sounds delicious just as a spread. It is, it's, it, you can, in fact, I, I have that as a separate little recipe uh, on my website, but it's, in, it's kind of embedded here in this recipe as well. It's wonderful on canopies. Um, it, you can, you, I even use it as a glaze for baking pie crusts and so forth. So um, have, you, have you written any books, Kathy? No, but I'm ready. <laughs> I, I think, think it's I have enough time. recipes now. I just need to, uh, uh, how to navigate to find a book agent. Maybe you can advise. Well, um, okay. That's funny that you mentioned that because guess what we have on the show? Let's see what day. Very soon we have one of those. We well, actually we have a book publisher, Bob from Vegan Book Publishing. So maybe you want to watch that because yes, we're I think that's a great about. idea. I just need to be pointed. But you should also talk to us because my husband and I teach business courses on self-publishing because that's really, if you're wanting to make money, that's the way to go. Got it. All right. Yeah. Well, so that's... Jeremy wants to know if you're using a Japanese eggplant because he founds those aren't bitter and require no salting. Yeah, well, that's true. For stuffing, they're not ideal because they're so narrow and shallow. Um, but even these, uh, these eggplants that I'm using today um, are very sweet. So um, that used to be the case. Um, this is tomato paste, by the way, just regular tomato paste that I'm adding in here. With my normal pepper paste, I, this is not included, but in this recipe, we're actually combining tomato with the peppers to make a tomato paper, pepper. Kenny says he um, wants to stuff it in a squash. I'm guessing Kenny doesn't like eggplant. Oh, absolutely. Zucchinis would be terrific or summer squash or whatever kind of squashes you want. Wow. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of water and I might have to add more just be so we get uh, the right consistency. And I'm adding a little miso. Now, for those of you that are entirely salt free, as is wonderful if you are there at that point, but many people uh, are transitioning or need, you know, just uh, find their food not palatable, palatable initially when they transition to a plant-based diet. And Michael Greger, Dr. Michael Greger, had some research on his website recently uh, about miso actually being beneficial for lowering blood pressure. It seems to counteract the salinity uh, that's used in making miso. So I add um, for this recipe, um, but uh, some miso in, uh, in the sauce and in the saute, but if you don't prefer salt at all, just leave it out. Okay, so let's just run this for a second. It'll be noisy, I'm sorry. Actually, the guests don't realize that it won't be noisy because of Zoom, but I'll tell her that when she comes back. How's that? See, I told you guys I learned something every day. Today I learned about red pepper paste. That sounds amazing. A few of you have said you've bought it in Middle Eastern markets. Is it a pure product or does it have like other things in it like sugar, oil, salt? I'd love to know. And don't forget if you water your pan pants, <laughs> if you water your pants, that's not good. If you water your plants with pot liquor, always cool it first. You don't want to be using the hot broth on plants, but that's another great use for the pot liquor. But it's so delicious. I just drink it for breakfast every morning. I steal all the nutrients from my husband's greens. All right, you back, Kathy? This is uh, this is a great consistency for the saute. It's uh, just the way it is, and we'll be thinning it out a little bit more later on. Now, I'm just going to stop for a minute and poke my head in here, back to our eggplants, because I'm going to rotate them. Um, and we're going to rotate them a couple of times as they're cooked, so they cook evenly in the little bit of broth that we have. And they've got a ways to go, but. Just want to not neglect them. Okay, and the last thing, uh, well, I guess two more things before we do our saute is um, wanted to introduce you. Not everybody, if you're not from Italy, you might not be familiar with this gadget. This is a mezzaluna, a half moon is what it's called. And it's a wonderful, simple tool uh, for certain operations like what we're doing here is combining some garlic cloves with some fresh herbs, parsley that are gonna go in this dish. 
And, uh, you know, you can certainly use a chef knife, um, but if you use a food processor or um, something of that ilk, uh, oftentimes you just pulverize things into a paste. And what a mezzaluna allows you to do is to just combine things to the degree of um, am amalgamating them, but leaving them distinct pieces. So it, you're not, oh, you, you can stop well before you get to a paste. Uh, and you see, it just takes a couple of seconds. So I'm going to, in the meantime, I'm gonna start heating up my saute pan. Any questions from anybody? Uh, no, not a question, but I actually Googled red pepper paste and Sadaf, S-A-D-A-F yes. sells it. And that's pretty much a company that sells in most ethnic markets. And it just oh, had- okay. I have not found it here, but there you go. Well, the so nice, and you can I get it online. It has, does it have oil in it? I've the one that I found had three ingredients, red bell pepper, salt and citric acid. So it didn't have oil and it didn't have sugar. So that's cool. I'm going to check it out. And then next time I go to the ethnic market. You, cer you certainly could. But if you didn't want the salt or the citric acid, you can just simply make your own. And it's, you can see how easy it is. It's, it's just, if you have a blender, that's all that, uh, that's all that it takes. So one of my missions in doing this work is to coax people back into the kitchen. Um, because just as a society, we have, we are so attracted to fads and fashions and the latest thing, uh, we, we are at risk at losing, losing our, our, the traditions from our, whatever culture we come from, where these, uh, whether it's European or Mesoamerican or Asian or South Asian, it's, uh, it's really where our best health benefits stem from is the fruits of the earth and making things in your own way and developing your own traditions and passing them on to your own to your children and their children. And so I'm I'm hoping to it's it's fighting the tide against pro, ultra processed foods and restaurants and all the rest as as you well know uh, AJ. But um, it's it's because I think it's one of the advantages. Well, it's like a double-edged sword being American. We're such a melting pot of so many different cultures. And that's made us very innovative, very creative, very open to new ideas and so forth. But the, the, the downside is that we're not as linked to tradition, traditions, culinary traditions in particular. And that, that has its risks from a health perspective as well. Um, so we, we, we need to create a, a food culture, a healthy food culture and, uh, and, and celebrate it. So that's what I hope we all can do. Just want this to get a little bit hotter. Uh, the last thing while I'm just waiting for the pan to heat up a little bit is we'll be using two spices uh, in this filling. One is cumin and uh, one way to take your cooking up to a different level is to make your own spices, which are like super easy to do. Um, and so for the cumin, you can do this little test at home. You can buy cumin very inexpensively in, a, in, a, in an ethnic market in South Asia, the Indian or Pakistani market um, for you know, a dollar or two, it will last you a, quite a, a long time. And the seeds remain quite, before you grind them, they remain quite potent because uh, their essential oils are embedded under their seed coat. Um, but when you're ready to use them, like in a dish like this, and it's part of the recipe you'll see, is I just sprinkle a couple of uh, teaspoons in a, in a dry skillet, heat it up, uh, heat up the skillet first, and just put, put them in for not even a minute, you know, 30 seconds till they become fragrant, and then remove them and grind them. And you'll find if you can compare uh, your cumin prepared just like that, takes nothing, if you have a little coffee grinder or a spice grinder, to what you buy uh, that's shelf steady, you know, in the little uh, McCormick or Pensies or any of the other pre-ground forms, there's just like night and day in terms of the flavor that it delivers. So 
that's just a wonderful thing to do with all your seeds and spices is to grind them before you use them and you'll get much more pleasure out of, out of your cooking. All right, let's get, get the show on the road. So we're just going to dry saute the onion. It will take a couple of minutes for it to just uh, begin to caramelize. And we'll, this is a black pan, so you can't really see, but it will, on a stainless pan, you would see it darken, begin to darken the beginning of the pan. It just has to, has to heat up enough to do that. So we're gonna just let that do its thing. Uh, the other spice we're using in this dish is this freshly ground black pepper. And if you make this dish, if you like heat uh, a little bit of spice, then when you're roasting your peppers, you can add uh, a chili of whatever variety that you enjoy or two and roast those as well and just put them into your mix in terms of the sliced uh, peppers and the pepper tomato paste that we're making. And uh, in that case, you might uh, lessen the amount of black pepper that you're using. But, um, but that's, that's just an individual preference. It's up to you. It just, you can really tweak this in different directions depending on your own, your own taste and what you enjoy. Adina wants to know if your husband ever helps you cook or prep. Um, he has this, he's a great cook. I have discovered, we met in Italy, he's from Florence, Italy. And we met when I was a graduate student over there. And my observation, at least for Florentine men, is that they all seem to absorb culinary talent from their nonne, you know, from their grandmas. I don't know how it happens. He doesn't spend, I do most of the inventiveness, especially now uh, in the kitchen. But uh, on days when I just need a break, uh, he takes over and he's, he has, he's great. He, he makes, uh, he makes uh, pasta dishes and uh, gosh, you know, I mean, in our earlier days, he did more cooking because I was doing less, but um, he certainly has those abilities and I think he enjoys it too as a pastime. So Jill says you're using a nonstick pan. Would a stainless steel pan work too? And there was a question if yes, you enjoyed it. Steel, if I had a, another skillet that was stainless, I have this uh, deeper skillet that I'm using here. But absolutely, if you have a stainless one, it's terrific. There's nothing uh, special about using nonstick for, for this dish. And someone asked if you enjoyed the Cornell course. Very much. It was, um, I mean, it was a number of years ago, but it was just a, a wonderful introduction. Uh, great support from the staff there and really broadens your appreciation of the impact of food and nutrition on health and on the environment. So yeah, it's a bit of a commitment. It's forget it. it's like three sessions of six weeks each. I, I can't re quite remember, but, um, and you have homework, <laughs> but it was uh, well worth every penny. I, I, I enjoyed it. Yeah, so guys, we didn't have the recipe today in the show notes. So she's going to put it on her website, Kathy's Kitchen Prescription, about an hour after the show. And I've been posting that website several times. So please check the chat. Thank you. And then we'll have that in the show notes as well. Okay, so this has to, just has to do its thing. Let me check the eggplants again, see if I can give them another quarter. Yeah, you can just give these quarter turns. It takes about 35 minutes for these fellows to, to really cook. The second phase of this dish is after, after the eggplants cook down and after our filling is ready, um, the dish is all cooked, really. And we finish it in the oven just to reheat all the elements. There's, you really don't need to. If everything were piping hot, you could serve it just as it is. But, um, but and we'll see how our time is at the, at the end and whether we have time to do that. But otherwise, I'll plate it for you and I'll show you exactly what it would look like if you did just 
fill the eggplants, put them back in this pan. Um, and I'll show you with, uh, with uh, diluted pepper sauce on the base and spooned on top. And, um, and then I'll plate a, a, an individual eggplant for you so you can see one possible idea for how you might want to serve it. All right, we're getting there. They're not really browning yet. Come on. It's a lot of moisture in this onion, apparently. Should take another minute. Uh, so what else can I tell you? I think what I'll do Do you always make involved recipes or do you eat more simply when it's just yourself? Um, you know, it depends what meal it is. Actually, my breakfast and lunch are super, super simple. Uh, typically for breakfast in the winter, oftentimes we'll have a porridge of some sort with, uh, with fruit and uh, our ground flaxseed. Um, but these days I've been making sourdough bread, whole grain sourdough bread. And um, I love to have just a skinny, skinny slice of it with a little uh, sugar-free preserves on top and a cup of, of decaf coffee. And that's my, my breakfast that I really am enjoying these days. Um, and for lunch, we have beans and greens. And that's really very, very simple. And we almost do that religiously. Uh, for dinner, I get a little more inventive, but not all my recipes are complex. Uh, sometimes they are a little more involved, but you can stage anything like this. And you'll find, um, at least the way I cook, is I always have roasted peppers. I always have roasted uh, tomatoes on hand. And so when you put pull together a dish like this, it really is not, it's just a simple saute. It's not as, as uh, laborious or lengthy as as it might seem as if you're doing all everything all at once. And, uh, but I, we have a lot of soups, we have a lot of stews, I love polenta. Um, and what I like to do, I'm kind of a, a curious eater, everybody's different. Some people are much more um, habitual. And uh, they, you know, most people I'd say, you know, probably have a dozen recipes that they rotate through during the week. And those are their, their favorites. I think pre COVID, a lot of people that I know we're spending, we're, we're eating out a lot of the time. I, know, I don't know how common that is across America, um, but it seems that people are often taking out and eating out, you know, half their meals. And so, um, you know, really puts you at a higher risk because of all the oils and salt and, and everything else that's used uh, typically in restaurants to, to drive their sales. I think the onions are ready now. Um, and while we can't see it in the black pan, I'm just going to deglaze the bottom of the pan before I add the parsley and the garlic because that will burn easily and quickly. With a little bit of liquid, you could use the broth. I have a little bit of an open bottle of wine. Uh, just you wanna make sure if you use wine or vermouth that it's dry and uh, you know, just a couple of tablespoons just to lift up the sugars that are adhering to the bottom of the pan because that's all a lot of flavor in there that you're gonna capture. Well, and, people are uh, people are asking if they can buy your cookbook, but it's not written yet. So I guess you're gonna have to wait now. Yes, she's I, not I'm, I'm delighted if you would like it. And um, and I, with a little bit of guidance and maybe AJ, I'll pick your brain about self-publishing if that's the way to go. Absolutely. I just, uh, haven't quite, I've been stymied. I just haven't known how to how to get going on that, but yeah. I, a number of people have asked and-, and uh, well, Then it's time. So a couple of people are asking other alternative ways to cook the eggplant, like in the instant pot or microwaving it so it would take less time. Um, I don't know if, um, I haven't tried that. And I, so I really can't say, I know, you know, while you're doing the saute, this is really cooking. So it's not taking incrementally more time the, the reason I do it this way is so it's evenly cooked all across. 
uh, and doesn't fall apart. You can you can stop at the right moment, but um, it'd probably be worth you know experimenting to see if you can just walk away from it and and, and go off and do other things. So Pat says, I'm glad to be watching you live, Kathy, because I learned so much from you and really miss your classes. Thank you. Hi, Pat. I miss you too. I know. So I'm, uh, thank you for joining. So I'm adding the peppers. And I'm going to add our pepper tomato. It smells wonderful. And I'm just going to stir that around for a minute. We're going to add, I'm just going to let this cook for a second before I add. Give this a minute just to combine. It's such a beautiful dish because, especially when you're using colorful peppers and tomatoes, um, because we eat first with our eyes, I find. And if you make a dish attractive, you will even getting the most recalcitrant omnivore uh, coming to your table and wanting to partake. It's the visual effects, even before you taste, of course the aromas help as well. Your whole, your whole home will be filled with flavor. Um, I'm gonna add the cumin, the pepper, tomatoes, And the tomatoes and the peppers, you'll find, um, have a lot of juices. Uh, and we want to capture as much of that as possible. If, if they do, you know, in the bottom of your container, uh, just pour them right in. They're all flavorful and nutritious. And that's all there is to this. I'll add the miso at the very end. Um, the miso is going to cook, you know, miso is a live probiotic food. So normally if we were doing a Japanese dish, we would be adding it with no flame afterwards. So, so as to get the benefit of the probiotics, uh, there as well, this dish, it's mostly being used as a flavorant and a healthier alternative to salt. Uh, Dina wants to know if you eat a lot of raw fruits and vegetables. I do. I, you know, and it's so interesting. Hang on, add a little water. Um, I was not a fruit eater growing up. I, I just didn't crave them and now I do. So the, the remarkable thing, I mean, in the audience today, I don't know how many people have been plant-based for a very long time, how many are plant curious and are just putting a toe in the water and wanting to uh, eat more plants. Um, but your, your tastes change very dramatically uh, as you stop using cooking oils and if you eliminate sugar and salt, bring it way, 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 way down. Um, all of a sudden your taste buds open and you can perceive so much more flavor from your produce, uh, making you know raw vegetables and raw fruits just an epiphany that you didn't realize you could get that much pleasure out of, you know, from a sensual point of view of, from your mouth. Um, it just, uh, it recalibrates your taste buds for sure. Great. Let's see, there's a question. Why do you, uh, Gina says, why do you cut the tomatoes before you roast them? And Dina wants to know what kind of miso are you using? And Peggy says, is there a substitute for miso? Okay, so let me start with, um, I cut the tomatoes uh, so that while they're roasting, they can caramelize the sugars. Otherwise, they'll just collapse. They, you could do it, certainly. They would just collapse. These are almost ready. Um, but we want to we wanna brown the edges. So when we cut the tomatoes in half uh, and roast them at the temperatures that we were talking about, 375 or so, in time, they'll just get a nice dark edge. And those will be uh, caramelized sugars that are you know, an extra dimension of flavor that I'm looking for. Um, so it's more flavorful if they, if they concentrate their flavors. If they're whole, the water has nowhere to go. I mean, eventually they'll burst and they'll collapse in a little puddle, 
but you won't get that other dimension of caramelized sugaring that, uh, that is nice in the dish. It's just subtle, but it, it adds something. Misos, you know, it's not a big deal for this one. You could use Aka red miso. That's what this is for this dish. Uh, but I also use the uh, Shira white, white uh, and Shinshu, I think is the yellow. They're, uh, you know, the white is a little milder. The red is a little stronger. You can use less of the red. You might need a little more of the white to balance the flavors depending on your palate. Um, but from a culinary perspective, it, it's, it's a dish, it won't really matter which ones you use. It's not that delicate. There's robust flavors here in the tomato and the pepper. So you can't go wrong is what I'm saying. Um, and there was one more question. Um, oh, an alternative to miso. Um, I mean, there are lots of ways that I'm sure Chef AJ has talked about as well to, to eliminate salt and bring, you know, uh, dependence on salt uh, with, uh, with other flavorants, with um, herbs and spices and citrus and so forth. Uh, for some dishes, you can use seaweeds that have a, a certain amount of salinity that would not work here so well because there, there is that aroma of the sea that just uh, wouldn't, wouldn't be appropriate. Um, I actually just purchased, ooh, I've gone fuzzy. I don't know what happened there with the camera. Can you, is that, uh-oh. Wait, that is so weird. You have gone fuzzy. That's never happened. I Should I call Giordano? <laughs> uh, well, this is, has you, have you guys ever heard of fuzzy, Zoom going fuzzy? She's in Connecticut. Oh wait, it cleared up. Phew, thank goodness. Cause for a cooking demonstration, you definitely yeah, want to be able to good. see. <laughs> Um, I was just about to say that I just bought it and I haven't tried it yet. It's a powdered miso. Um, so for some recipes where you don't want to add liquid, you know, any liquid or even paste that, that you're trying to keep something very dry, um, that might be an alternative to salt. But, um, but if, you're, if, if your question is based on that you don't want anything with sodium in it, then um, there are other ways to engage your mouth so that you're not missing it. And if you go really off salt altogether in a week or two, your palate will adjust to that and you will not need it. So it's a transitional thing and it's kind of based on your health uh, uh, status and your, you know, and your, what your goals are from a health perspective, I'd say. Yep. Uh, Janelle wants to know how long it'll stay good in the fridge. It's years for me, so it's Forever. It? It's because it, it is a preserved food. There's no risk of that. You will, you know, it keeps beautifully for a very long time. Okay, I'm just going to mix it in here. And I think we're ready. So, and now we're getting to the end. So what, uh, what I'm going to do, because I think our eggplants are ready too, is I'm going to plate one for you. So normally what I would do is I stuff them and put them in the oven on a 350 oven just for everything to heat up before, let's say I make this in advance and then supper is in an hour or two, uh, just to bring everything together with the, with the sauce. I'm going to add a little bit of uh, water to this. So hang on, let me... Because this, this, I'm going to keep some of this at this consistency because that's good. But for this part of the dish, now we're looking for a much looser paste. So hang on. Wow, Jennifer says she made her own chickpea miso. I didn't know you could make your own miso. Wow, that's that is great. How long did it ferment? Uh, what, well, she says that? we have to check back next summer to, to find out how it went, but I didn't realize you could make your own miso. That that's is a labor. Cool. That's impressive. That, that is very impressive. Yeah. Good for you. What's your favorite type of food or meal to eat? And I always say one that somebody else made. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, it's, it's, I'm like one of those people that falls in love with whatever is in front of me, whatever catches my fancy. So I go through periods of experimentation. Um, but you never, you, you never had weight or health issues, right? Um, I was definitely, I was pudgier. I was a pudgy adolescent, I have to say a little bit. I went through a period and I was probably 
15 pounds when I change my diet, that just, it's like resets your body to puberty, wherever you were as, uh, at least that was my experience. I went back down to, you know, my set weight, which is what I was when I was a teen. Um, but, uh, but there's a lot of health problems in my family, a lot of cancer, a lot of heart disease, Parkinson's, diabetes. I mean, just like a picture of America, uh, sadly, today, we are, we're all at risk. So this diet is not just for my husband, it's just for all of us, my son, me, you know, everyone I know, <laughs> I, I sort of try not to be too obnoxious, but it's, it's hard not to want to share the benefits because you feed your energy, your vitality, little problems that you associate with aging and you just think aches and pains or reflux or, uh oh, I've gone fuzzy again. Yeah, you know, that's yeah. weird. I've never had that happen. I'll, I'll check it out afterwards and ask. We've had our, our uh, <laughs> moments today. Dina okay. wants to know how old your son is. 30. Right now, 30 and living in LA, as a matter of fact. So he's closer to your neck of the woods than. Well, the next question is always is he single? He is single. <laughs> is he he's looking and he, he's single and he's vegan is he looking because we we always get a lot of people interested he's single and he's vegan he's uh he's by just, i'll embarrass the hell out of him if i talk about him his name is lorenzo he's uh, a plant biologist uh and he has a startup with a little lab with uh a partner of his who went to school with him and they're doing some exciting things on on a molecular level of working with plants. That's fascinating. Uh, so here we are. When your eggplant is nice and soft and flaccid, I, I don't know if you can, see, I wish I could zoom in here. Um, we're going to open it up very gingerly and whoops. I'm going to, you know, be careful not to tear it because it could, it could open too much. And I'm going to put this wonderful filling inside. And you really want to overstuff these fellas. You know, just be gentle so that it, it, it holds together. But this, you'll have extra possibly after I, uh, a little bit extra, makes a wonderful pasta sauce. So nothing is, is wasted. It's not just for this dish. You could make, you could make just the saute and enjoy it on, on baked potatoes or polenta or you know, any kind of whole grain or pastas. Or zucchini um, noodles. I bet it, I was thinking it'd be delicious on zoodles. Mm, yeah. You know, that pepper sauce, the pepper tomato sauce with or without the, the tomato paste is just scrumptious. Um, and it's, uh, and so part of, I uh, just made an artichoke sauce. You know, every vegetable has its character and we underuse them. They're just capable of doing so much more. Um, So that's about all I can put here. And then, hang on. When I serve this, and this will be our dinner tonight, is I like to top it off with something that's very traditional in Turkey. I just pour off a little of the liquid. Is a homemade soy yogurt which is very easy to make. And I have the recipe on my website as well. It's a, another probiotic food, very healthy, just using a, a whole soy milk. And uh, if you just top it off with a, um, on your dish with in my little garden, have a lot of mint as many of you might. This is actually a spearmint. And uh, if it doesn't have to be, any mint will do is beautiful just as a garnish. Um, Joan wants to know if you take the seeds out of the eggplant. Not at all. The seeds uh, will soften and disappear. And in fact, what will, this is the most filling dish you can imagine. There are no calories in this dish to speak of. It's eggplants, you saw onion, peppers, uh, tomato, and there's so much soluble fiber and, and insoluble fiber in this dish. It's extremely filling. One of these 
uh, is dinner and you really don't even need, uh, I think on my recipe, I say you can serve it with a whole grain or there's a yogurt flatbread that, uh, that I share on my, my website as well, Yufka, that uh, is lovely with this as well. But frankly, it, this is a meal just the way it is. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, it's hard for me to see the camera. Oh my God, that looks amazing. So very, you know, very festive, very elegant, but really not difficult, a little bit of time, but you can, you can, you can uh, space the time out and do things in advance or days ahead. It's really very forgiving. Um, so I hope you try it and I hope you like it and let me know. Um, and uh, yeah, any, any more quote, anybody want to say anything that I can help them with while we are still together? Well, let's see if there's any more. Everybody's saying it looks amazing. Dina's saying it would be great with some rice. I bet the sauce would be amazing on rice too by yes, itself. Yes, yeah. use a whole basmati rice or jasmine rice would be lovely, you know, and in keeping with the, with the flavor profiles of the region. That looks amazing. Well, thank you so much for doing this. My pleasure. It's my joy to share what I do. And I wish everybody a wonderful afternoon and happy eating. And I just want to go over what you're going to learn today. Amazing. And thank, thank you all for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow when our guest is a wonderful plant-based doctor named Dr. Sal. And if you want the recipe in about an hour, go to Kathy's website, which I've been posting over and over again, and try to make this because it looks absolutely amazing. And don't forget to go to vegworldmag.com and get your free subscription to the magazine that Kathy is the food editor for. Thanks again, Kathy. It looked amazing. Oh, it was great to be with you and have fun, everybody. Take care.